Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another uh, Spotlight show. We are here with Peter Dorsman. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Hi, Sydney. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. And um, yeah, so we know that you're out in uh, Vancouver right now, and uh, you are also managing the, um, the Vancouver Angel Forums, right? That's right, among, among many other things. So I know that you're very involved in early stage investment, and uh, you yourself have, of course, um, been a co-founder as well, so you know how to go through mm -hmm. all of those trenches. That's right, that's correct. I've done everything, so I'm, I'm <laughs> pretty seasoned in that department, yeah. And so as we are all going back, um, you know, going through 2020 in our own different ways, wanted to ask you how your 2020 is going and how you find that the investment uh, stage has changed because of all the changes that we've been seeing around the world. Yeah. So what's your take on that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I started the year off with a bang. I did a lot of traveling. I was in Europe for a few weeks. I went to Israel to one of the biggest tech conferences. And I came back sort of super energized and super charged. And then... COVID hit, obviously, and I was, I had sort of a deja vu with the 2008 crisis. I saw the stock market going down and I thought, oh, well, here we go again. But the weird thing is within three or four weeks, the stock market sort of picked up again mm -hmm. and we were having our investor meetings and all, you know, there was still a lot of activity going on in tech. And I think tech came through the whole crisis pretty well because in a way we're trained for that. We've always been, most of us have been, a lot of us have been working from home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of tech solutions that are now required more than ever. Uh, and a lot of capital was still flowing. So I've been, I've been pretty active with the fund that I, that I run with a few others uh, called the fund here in BC. It's an angel fund with the angel forum. We moved our entire business online with having company pitching and then the mentoring and meeting and other stuff such as what I'm doing to you with you today, you know, just continued as usual. So it's been a pretty active year. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I've been fortunate, so I will not complain. I do miss the travel, though. I really mm -hmm. love to travel, and that's a bit of a down. But also because in the investment world, you know, relationships are very important. So going out for lunch, going out for a beer, getting to know people in person is very important. And that's not happening right now. So That's very but, true. And it yeah. sounds like, you know, we can all take a page out of tech startup in, in general in the environment, like you mentioned, and how, you know, moving forward, um, that, uh, that would help us all improve what whether it's working from home or going, doing things online or being more efficient or cost cutting in, in certain areas. So in your opinion, um, what do you think that corporations, you know, moving out of 2020 can learn from us tech startups or the, the you know, startup industry in general? Well, I, I think you have to be very versatile, very adaptable. I, uh, I actually had a, a few calls with a few banks and they were all saying they were going to be working from home. And, you know, the banks are traditionally the big Canadian banks, sort of the nine to five uh, work culture and they said Peter we're going to be working from home well into 2021 and then we're going to what they call the hotel model like you're going in for like two days a week or something mm -hmm. for meetings so I think it will see a lot of that happening and it creates lots of opportunities look at all that real estate that's being occupied by insurance companies and banks and whatnot you know maybe that can be redeveloped for lower cost housing in particular here in Vancouver there is you know need for may not be lower cost, but more housing options. So I think, you know, a lot of larger corporations will adapt and, and use more tech solutions. And again, you can see it reflected in stock prices uh, and, and, and the tools that we use like Dropbox, like Slack, like Zoom. Um, so, you know, all of that had been happening and we in tech always knew about it. It's now accelerated to, uh, to you know, to, to where we are today. So I think that's, in a way, it's good. It opens up a lot of opportunities and we can only be uh, positive about it, I think. Absolutely. And, um, and you know, being in a very unique position of managing such a big um, angel, you know, organization, um, what would you say to people that are kind of coming in and very new to the investment world, which is a lot of our audience as well, um, the difference between a VC and um, an angel group like yours? An angel group, you know, we, we you know, angels operate, you know, used to operate as lone, lone wolves, lone, lone, lone people that make an investment in a company, a small amount, you know, angels check sizes from anywhere from 10K to maybe 150, 200K, whereas VCs invest large amounts and it's usually institutional money um, that they build big portfolios. But what you've seen with angel investors, they started to collaborate. So with angel form, we have a lot of angels joining our group. We have a few companies present and people would invest in them 
on their own account, but they would collaborate with the other angels. And that was also the genesis of the fund, the WE fund, that we said, you know, we can probably make better investment decisions if we collaborate as angels, do due diligence together, and then work across borders, you know, with angels in, you know, in Washington State and in, in Ontario or even Quebec, you know, and do deals together. So angels, while they're on their own, they can collaborate and, and you know, still with a relatively small amount of money, if you pull that money, you can make a big impact. With eFund, we've made 47 investments now into 32 companies. We did three over the summer through COVID. And, you know, that model is working very well. Uh, but these are all individual angels who've invested in the fund. And when you do a deal, sometimes people like it so much that they, in addition to what the fund does, they will invest them themselves as well. So. Perfect. Yeah, and it's a, absolutely. It, and, a, and, a, and a fund is a good entry point for, you know, people who are new to the angel business. If you, you're not comfortable dumping 50K into a company, you may want to put it in a fund and, and, and get to learn how it works and spread your risk across a portfolio of companies. That's right. That's very true. So then instead of kind of having a lot of people um, come through you directly and having to vet that yourself and trying to, to do the due diligence yourself, uh, definitely be able to have um, a set of expertise out there. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely, that that's perfect. Um, and um, and then in terms of how things may be changing in the future, do you see uh, the Angel Fund organization evolving in a specific way uh, going into the future and adapting in um, in certain ways? Yeah, I see a lot more uh, collaboration, as I mentioned. So I see a lot more people pooling their funds. Mm. Right, we have now a lot of uh, we have in Vancouver. We just this summer, and my wife is involved in that. Started mm. the Women's Equity Lab, where a group of women professional come together and they pool their money and they start looking at deals. So you see a lot of groups uh, doing that in in different formats. So I see a lot more funds and funds and and also a lot more fun uh, happening uh, in, in in this business. So yeah, I. What I would really like hope is that there's more collaboration across sort of provincial borders. So the, one of the deals we did over the summer was a second financing for a company that I'm on the board of. And we have angels in there from Victoria, from Barrie, Ontario, from Toronto, and from Vancouver. Like, and that's the sort of collaboration that we need more of, I think. We need to mobilize more capital um, to do more deals. Absolutely. I completely agree. And, you know, now more than ever, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty and more people and more and more people are getting into entrepreneurship and sometimes for the first time, as it happens with uh, every, you know, uncertainty in the market these days. Um, so that that's perfect. Um, one thing that I did want to ask you about the uncertainty in the market um, is a, a funny din dinner conversation I had last night. And so then I just thought of asking it to you this morning, which is um, that investors on, are kind of uh, funny creatures just in general, but um, investing directly in COVID seems both to be short-sighted because it's something that a lot of people are, you know, getting a lot of speculation about, especially in the public market and sometimes in the private market as well. So mm -hmm. it can seem very short-sighted, but at the same time, when you're dealing with a lot of biotech or med tech companies that are then stalled because you can't go to the hospitals, you cannot get clinical trials in order to prove, you know, what you're working on is, is, is going to happen or not, uh, trial is going to be delayed. And so then both sides kind of have a little bit of trouble with funding those that are non COVID related biotech med tech and those that are directly COVID related biotech med tech. So yeah. what is your opinion on, uh, on that either as an investor or, um, or an advisor to the startups? Yeah, well, you know, with our fund, we've done quite a few of med tech type deals and we continue to do them. I'm always a bit careful if, if a lot of companies jump on the bandwagon of COVID and, and claim they have the solution because, you know, the, the, the cycles in biotech are very long. So I would, you know, put my money on, on players that are already in doing that research or are you know, along the way uh, much further. So that, that'd be my first thought. And on the other side, you know, you know, supporting companies that are sort of uh, you know, struck by the, the COVID crisis and they're in the, in the med tech space. I mean, I, I would apply the same analysis as if there's no COVID. I would just look at, are these companies going to survive? Are they in good shape? Uh, do they have the right team? Do they have the right technology? Are they going to have the right, you know, the same thing. So I'm a bit agnostic about when it comes to investing about the whole COVID thing. Uh, and I would just do an, an, an analyze the deal based on its merits and, and put money in on that choice that is a that is a great way to analyze things yeah. as a whole i think you know imagine if that we were not in this situation would you still invest yeah. in it that's perfect yeah. 
Great. Well, thank you so much, Peter. And then um, now we're going to play a little game. So it's going to be a yeah. truth and a lie. So you have your two pieces of paper. Yeah, and I have and have I've written it down already. So I'm oh, okay. So I'm ready you have, to go. Had to, I have not written it down, obviously, because my <laughs> paper is blank. So I'm going to write down a truth and a lie, and you already have yours. Hopefully, that is correct, right? And yes. then um, if you because if you wrote two truths or two lies, we're going to have to change the game. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to get to know you a little bit more. So just give me a moment. I'm going to write down mine now. Sure. Okay, so Wait. here are mine. So I'm going to show you one at a time. I'm yeah. going to show you this one first, which is uh, lived in Copenhagen. Yeah. Or is this one true, which is born in Vancouver? Mm. Which one do you think is true and which one do you think is a lie? I, I think you probably lived in Copenhagen because that's pretty specific. And I'm guessing that's right. And born in, you always told me you came from Victoria. So I'm guessing born in Vancouver is a lie. Oh, you're so good. Very good, Peter. Because uh, even when I say that, people who are not from either of those cities hear Vancouver in the same conversation, too. So very good. You win. And now let me see yours. Show me one at a time so I can read okay. it properly. So this is the first one. Uh, okay. Hold it up a little higher. All right. Um, I, I sum summited Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. What? How, how big is that mountain? That's about uh, 18, almost 19,000 feet. Wow. Okay. What's the other one? The other one is, it's a bit similar. It says, I summited Mount Aconcagua in Argentina. And how big is that one? That one is close to 23,000 feet. Okay. Um, oh, so so you, you know both of them automatically. Uh, it, it seems like you, like you know them from like the back of your hand, as though you knew I was going to ask you that specific question. Yes. Or you just know a lot about mountains. One or the other has to be true. Um, so I think, let me see. It would be really embarrassing if you told me uh, just like side information, like one of them is in Africa, one of them's in Argentina, and I just didn't know that. And then that's part of your lie. That would be really embarrassing. I think... I think the one that's true, over 20,000 feet is so high. The highest one I did was Machu Picchu, which was really high and it made me feel nauseous. Yes. I can't imagine other people doing it even higher. Um, I'm going to pick the one in Africa. I think that one is true. That's true. Correct. Oh, good. Yay! Yeah, you did it. <laughs> so, and I tell you what happened is so we did Kilimanjaro in 2016. And I got so excited about it. So I said, well, let's go to the next higher one higher up in mm -hmm. Aconcagua. But Aconcagua is 4,000 higher, which is sort of 4,000 feet higher. It's doable. You know, it's not technical, but it was brutal. And we got close. We got past base camp, we, but we, all, we were a group of 10. We all failed. So, <laughs> but, so, so it, it's, it's a tough one. It's a brutal mountain. Did you have it's to take it, those special pills for the yeah. altitude like I did? Yeah. Did it work for you? It didn't work for uh, me. It, it, it did a little bit. It helped, yeah. Okay. I yeah. still, like, was uh, basically sitting down a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you all have problems. Heavy breathing and yeah. you know, all sort of headaches and, and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, the fittest person can fail there because we're not made to be at, at those altitudes, as you know, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Your body comes, the higher you go, the more your body comes apart. So, and can you imagine people used to live in those areas too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is crazy to me. So yeah. that is, that is great though. Congratulations. You made it through <laughs> and, and you know, you're here to tell about it. So that was, that's yeah. what counts. Um, awesome. And so to wrap up, please, Peter, tell us about a project or a startup that you've invested in or you advise in that you're very excited about. Please share with us something that's going on. Yeah, okay, so there's an interesting company in Victoria that we invested in over the summer with our fund called DevDot, and it's a fintech, so they facilitate payments uh, in Canada, so you don't have to go to the bank to do wires, it's, it's super efficient, super fast, uh, it's all for large amounts in particular, so we use it a lot with the fund, so everything north of $3,000, but I use it myself as well to pay legal bills and stuff like that. So uh, DevDot, so uh, very cool engineers based in Victoria, and we made an investment and, you know, they could benefit from more customers in, 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 in Canada. So Perfect. check them out. Awesome. So they are available for both consumers and businesses. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So we are going to link them um, in our description below so that you guys can go and check out their website as well. 
So thank you so much, Peter, for your time and um, your, your generosity in sharing your knowledge with us. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you, Sydney. It was awesome.